Hello all. Welcome to the third episode of the Kickstart VMware Cloud Foundation project series. I'm Satya Sresta, a senior staff executive services architect at VMware, and I'm here with my colleague Vincent Hahn. In today's episode, we'll be going further into our conversations around Kubernetes within and on VCF. Welcome to the episode, Vincent. How have you been? Hey, hi Satya. I'm fine. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. So we've done two episodes so far. So what have you been hearing about our episodes? Yeah, I think other than you know the views that we got in videos, right? I think a few of fellow colleagues has asked us for the slides, and uh, yeah, I think that's good news, right? So yeah, absolutely happy to share these uh, slides or contents that is uh, helpful for others. Um, yeah, by <laughs> all means, man. It's it's good to hear that. Yeah. Okay, so for today's episode, uh, before we begin discussing about it, let's briefly review the key points that we have done in our previous episode. We dive deep into the topic of supervised clusters in TKZS, and we examine their role and how it interacts with different components of TKZS. We also examine the architecture of supervised clusters in TKZS cluster, as well as various components that constitute these clusters. We discussed how supervised clusters play a critical role in simplifying the management and operations of Kubernetes clusters within the TKZS environment. Vincent also showcased a live demonstration of deploying, configuring, and managing supervised clusters within the framework of TKZS on VCF. If you didn't catch our earlier episodes, please be sure to explore them on our VMware Cloud channel to build a solid understanding of Kubernetes in and on VCF. Okay, so next up in this episode, we'll be discussing load balancers and ingress controllers within the context of TKZS cluster on VMware Cloud Foundation. We'll explore the important role that load balancers play in managing Kubernetes workloads within VCF. So Vincent, yes. can you provide us uh, more information about the load balancers and ingress controllers, which is essential components of TKZS clusters? Yeah, definitely, man. Really happy to do this topic, right? Load balancer, ingress controllers. Uh, as you know, in my previous role, I'm taking care of networking and security, right? And I spend quite a fair bit of time on uh, doing load balancer and ingress controllers for Kubernetes, right? So really happy to share this uh, topic with everybody. Yeah, so probably the next few slides, we will just do a recap on uh, what we have covered so far. So this is on episode three, right? On yes. our advanced workload acceleration use case on VCF. And today we're going to just deep dive into all things load balancer, providing load balancer for Kubernetes clusters, TKGS, VM servers, and even, you know, vSphere ports. We will take a look at two solutions, right? The NSX and RV, and it will give you a comparison of you know, what's this two load balancer solution is all about. And, you know, hopefully by the end of this session, you get to choose which load balancer that you want to use, right? So we'll start with some recap on um, the vSphere with Fanzu architecture. I think, you know, the, the next few slides we kind of covered in the last episode. I just want to maybe just do a quick recap so that you know what are we talking about in even for load balancer. So we covered the supervisor clusters the last episode, and it comprises of multiple control planes. And you can actually use it to create multiple namespaces and each namespaces you could have a combination of tkcs vm and vsphere ports mm -hmm. so why are we talking about load balancer today it's you know you're going to have multiple replicas of control plane you no know, whether is it in the supervisor clusters or in the tkcs or you have multiple replicas of vms and vsphere ports all this requires a load balancer yeah just like this what this slide it's all about so this is on the supervisor control plane you actually mm -hmm. need a load balancer to provide a high availability as well as load balancing across all these control nodes. So if yeah. one of them fails, then the load balancer will be able to redirect the traffic to the working ones. Exactly. So same thing for workloads as well. So this will be your application users assessing. So whether you are using vSphere ports or you are using VM service or you're having ports in the TKC itself, same thing. You actually need a load balancer to load balance your user traffic to all these multiple replicas of ports. Okay. Basically, Load balancers are crucial even for your control plane components as well as your applications, which are user access, right? Basically, that's what we are presenting here. Correct. You are absolutely right. Yeah. Just to recap, we talked about these three options of load balancer in the previous episode. Um, so Kubernetes do not have a built-in load balancer. So you actually have to provide uh, the load balancer as a prerequisite. You have the option of using HA proxy, uh, but that is actually good for home labs and POC. So yep. we have talked about you know, production environment for our customers and partners. So we're going to focus on RV and NSX over here. So these two solutions are definitely production ready. Hopefully you will you know, get to choose what you use, like what I said before, uh, by the end of this session. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the NSX load balancer. And uh, this is also known as what we call the native load balancer 
in NSX. So if you are NSX Enterprise or even Advanced Editions previously, you have this option to use the NSX load balancer, the native load balancer. Right. So in a vSphere with Kubernetes construct, how it actually does is in, I mean, obviously you, you have to use NSX, right? So that you have the capability of using the load balancer, okay? Mm. So in NSX, you have the tier zero, tier one. So tier zero is basically the router that face a physical network that you have. And tier one is basically like a distributed router for your workloads. So in the case of TKC, right, you have multiple control planes if you spin up clusters and you actually need a load balancer for it. So when you actually configure your workload management in a vCenter, <laughs> and they will actually bring up this load balancer for your uh, supervisor control plane as well as your TKC clusters as well. Right, so all this is being run on the tier one. Mm -hmm. You activate any of these services, uh, whether it's for tier zero or tier one, they will be running in the H nodes itself, right? So H nodes is a construct in NSX. You have to create all these H nodes before mm -hmm. you can actually create all these virtual routers, right? Tier zero, tier one, and things mm -hmm. like that. So let's deep dive a little bit in the H cluster, so because this is where the NSX load balancer actually runs. Mm -hmm. So you have a H node one here and an H node two over here, so two nodes. And when you activate the load balancer, you will have to attach to a tier one. And that's where you have the active load balancer as well as hot standby being created. And yep. they are on two separate H node, right? For have a deep purpose. So let's say, for example, if one of the H node goes down, the hot standby will take over. Right. You can create multiple load balancer, right? So mm -hmm. these are like virtual load balancer instances running in the H node itself, right? So you know, for the first pair, active is on the H node one, and then mm -hmm. for the second pair, the active instance will be running on H node two. And most probably, they will be running on different hosts as well, right? Yes, the H node will also be running on different ESXi hosts. Yes. On the bare, uh, H nodes can also be in a bare metal, mm. so you know, different bare metal nodes, right? Yeah, yeah. So there is actually HA messages uh, going through across the H nodes, mm -hmm. and the the hello messages are sent in a different interval, right? So H nodes you get much shorter interval every mm -hmm. 0 0.3 seconds. And then for VM is every one second. Right. So why are we talking about this? Because this is an active standby architecture. So all your, for example, the, the VIPs that you created for your TKCs are all running active on this H node itself. If there's any failure, the timer will actually affect the failover timing. Right? So right. it's about one second for bare metal H nodes and it's about three seconds for VM H nodes. Yeah. So basically it's measuring three hard bits and if didn't get the hardware for three consecutive time, it will just fail over that active node to the next one, the hot standby, right? Correct. Yes. So of course, um, there's still failover to be done, correct? But it will be very limited in, in terms of the data plane impact because the states are actually synced across the H nodes, right? So these are some of the things that's being synced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to summarize, it is the architecture of LB in NSX, right? It's on active standby and just you have to be aware of that. So what is the downtime here? If let's say that failover happens, what is the downtime mm -hmm. for application? Yeah, so it's it's about three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. On a, a VM. Very minimal. That's what it means, right? Yeah, okay. Yep. Got it. So let's talk about the layer four load balancer for Kubernetes. Okay. And this is actually, you know, kind of like already integrated with the vSphere with Tanzu. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the integration is done via this thing called the NSX container blocking. So why is this important? is because it's all automated, right? So if the user were to create a supervisor clusters or a TKC, the control planes need to communicate with the NSX container plugin, or it tells the NSX manager to create the objects in, you know, if it's a load balancer, you would ask it to create the virtual server, create the server pool in the tier one, in the load balancer in the tier one, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is how the communication actually flow. So now in this diagram, this is for NSX load balancer, right? So if you are to use NSX load balancer, it's through NSX container plugin. How does that NSX container plugin get deployed in TKGS cluster? Yeah, so it doesn't really uh, install in the TKGS clusters itself. It's more of running in the supervisor control plane. Everything goes through as a supervisor control plane. So if you create a TKC clusters, so the NSX container plugin will watch it. And if you create a TKC clusters, you will actually go and create the VIP address for the TKC clusters. Yeah, sounds good. That's for NSX. So we'll move quickly to the RV. And mm -hmm. for those people who doesn't not too familiar with RV, I'll just do a quick introduction on what's RV all about. So this is the architecture of RV and uh, it is software defined as well. You have the RV controller. So this is the brain 
of the solution and mm. this is the controller. And this is where you, you have your centralized place to put your policies, your configuration, and take care of the lifecycle management of the load balancer itself. Mm -hmm. So it actually manages the load balancer. So this objects over here, this is the data plane, which is the load balancer. They can be in uh, different form factors, bare metal, VMs, right? All this is being managed by the RB controller itself. And uh, when you create any virtual service, the RB controllers then will go and configure the service engine. So it's kind of very similar to NSX as well, right? NSX, you have the NSX manager, which is basically the controller. Yep. And the H node is actually the data plane. So mm -hmm. in this case, for RV, it's very similar as well. Of course, it has many other features. You know, when you compare this with the NSX, there's rich analytics, right? It's really easy to do the automation. Uh, we have a lot of, um, I mean, it's RESTful API as well. You can get snippets of Ansible or even Terraform code. Uh, and then you can actually, you know, put it to the controller and that will help you with the automation of the service engine and the virtual services and things like that. I'm going to talk about the Elasticity. This is where it differs itself from NSX, okay? Mm -hmm. In the RV solution, it is an active-active setup, right? So you could have multiple service engine all running in active-active. This is different like what I've shown before as compared to the NSX where they run in an active standby setup. So this is going to help with the availability of your for your services in uh, in RV. The VIPs that's running for your workloads are actually being distributed across multiple service engine. The more you distribute the services into this service engine, and if one of the service engine fails, like animation is shown just now, right? It's one mm -hmm. of this. The services will actually get redistributed to the working ones. Right. And it's failed for a long time. The RV controller will detect it. Mm -hmm. And they will actually go and create a new instance of the service engine automatically. And then the traffic is, is being redistributed again automatically without you know any user intervention. Yeah. So if you think about this, it's like since my services are distributed across multiple nodes, so when one fail, less services will be impacted. So if you want a highly available service, then you know the active active setup in RV is going to benefit you. Yeah, absolutely. For the mission critical workloads that needs high resiliency and auto healing features, this looks really good. So other than the load balancer features that RV has, it also has a lot of other features that is uh, important when you are doing Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know you have a multi cluster setup. That's where like you probably want to use GSLB. For security, you might want to have a web application firewall. It also has the web application firewall, the WAF capabilities. You know, you can do rate limiting and things like that for your applications. Yep. Of course, it has all the integration with Kubernetes, right? So that's where all the, you know, container ingress services comes to play, right? Yeah. That is super important for Kubernetes and container world, right? In yeah. Some yeah. Yeah. Again, if you make the comparison between, you know, the RV and NSX load balancer, right? With RV, you get more feature rich services. And this is actually very important, right? When you are running in Kubernetes in your enterprise, you need a multi-cluster setup. That's where you need GSLB and you need security. That's WAF and things like that. Okay. Yes. yes. So for enterprise workloads that has mission critical applications running in it, I think IV is the way to go. And for today's load balancers context also, we will be covering more on IV, right? Yeah, more on IV. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. So we, we talk about the load balancer. It's going to be layer four load balancer, right? Whether you're talking about for supervisor clusters or for the TKC control plane. Of course, you can you can also create a load balancer for your VM service workloads as well, vSphere ports. Yeah. And let's now move into what happens to the workloads that you create in the TKC cluster itself, mm -hmm. right? Of course, you can still use load balancer as a service, but a lot of times customers want to use ingress because they can actually associate this with a FQDN and it makes much more sense to other users when they're coming in, assessing the applications running in the clusters itself. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Kubernetes ingress. So what is Kubernetes ingress? It actually exposes HTTP and HTTPS routes from your cluster to the outside world, right? Mm -hmm. So you have ports running services, and then you create ingress, like what I showed in the right, probably you have a you have a FQDN name. Yeah. And once you specify that, your client can actually use that to access your applications. And this is level seven construct, isn't it? Correct. This is a layer seven construct. Yeah. You could also use it to configure, terminate your SSL TRS sessions for your applications. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in order for you to use the ingress, you actually need an ingress controller. Okay. So of course you oh. have many options over there, right? RV itself can be an ingress controller for your Kubernetes ingress. Okay. Right. Then of course we need to talk about the RV Kubernetes operator. So basically, that's an uh, operator that itself that provides the ingress controller service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's now take a look at the architecture, what it actually does. 
So in your in your Kubernetes clusters, in your TKC clusters, okay, after you have created it, uh, you have your application ports running, and you want you know your developer wants to create an ingress, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where you actually needs to install the RV Kubernetes operator. Mm -hmm. So this runs in the cluster itself, and what it does, it actually watch the Kubernetes control plane. So if you create when you create an ingress and you put it into the the control plane, the RV Kubernetes operator will pick it up. Mm -hmm. He will send you know instruction to the RV controller, and the RV controller will then go and configure the load balancer. Right. This is slightly different from a lot of options out there in the market because mm -hmm. the service engine, which is effectively running the load balancer, it's outside the cluster. The scalability of the load balancer doesn't really depend on your cluster itself, right? So it's, it's not competing with your workload clusters. It's actually running outside the cluster. So you can have like two different kinds of scale, right? You, you can scale your service engine outside the clusters. You can also scale your workloads within the clusters itself. It's kind of separated and isolated from each yeah, other. Yeah, it's really yeah. decoupled. That means it can be more agile and scalable, right? It won't have performance impact on your workloads because the load balancer, all of that is running outside of that Kubernetes cluster, which is really cool. Yeah, exactly. So let's move on to a multi-cluster setup. We are talking about TKC over here, right? So one of the benefits of using vSphere with Danzu or, or Kubernetes VCF, it's the ability to use TKC which is life cycle managed by a cluster API, which means you could create multiple clusters. It could be multiple reasons. It could be used for different line of business. And the other great use case that I see is, you know, you could have different sites and you could actually create uh, separate clusters for the different sites mm -hmm. and you actually make replicas of the applications. And you can make it highly available across your multiple location or multiple sites using a, a GSLB, a DNS, right? That will help you to redirect traffic to different sites based on different algorithms. Right, it could be based on a uh, weightage and how you want to distribute the traffic, or it could be still based on an active standby a DR perspective kind of scenario. Right, so that's where we have the RV multi cluster Kubernetes operator comes into play. Mm -hmm. So, RV the AKO it taking care of the ingresses, right? So, basically, it's the configuration of the load balancer or the ingress controller. Yeah, but then in this case, you, you have the GSLB, which is effectively the DNS to configure, right? So, yeah. that's where you actually need AMKO. So mm. what it does, it actually goes into multiple clusters, look at the configuration, and then again, it communicates with the RV controller, and the RV controller will then configure the service engine. But mm. in this case, the service engine is not the load balancer. It is running the DNS itself. With this RV AMKO, you can have multiple TKC clusters being set up, and you can load balance your traffic across multiple different clusters, okay? Yeah, and so this is really a highly available construct. Now that AMKO, it, does it sit on each cluster? How does that work? Uh, it no, it, it doesn't sit on each cluster. You just need to pick one of the clusters mm -hmm. and the AMKO, and you provide credentials to the rest of the clusters. And right. the AMKO will then be able to go to the other clusters and pick up the ingresses that you have configured. And then what it does is configure the RV controller, and the RV mm -hmm. controller will then configure the, the load balancer. Yeah, right. And then it will do, it does the global server load balancing. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean I mean the DNS, not the load balancer. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, just to summarize uh, what we have covered so far for the RV, uh, as you can see, for Kubernetes um, services, you actually requires multiple components, right? Whether in the form of uh, ingress, which is load balancer, uh, you know, you want to provide security services, you want to provide uh, multi clusters capabilities over multiple sites, that you need GSLV and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, DNS. If you have actually tried out with other solutions, you'll kind of end up like multiple different discrete solution itself. So what RV actually provides here is an integrated solution with all these different services itself. And then of course, I'm going to show you in the demo itself, which is the dashboard of the RV controller. That's where all the configuration is going to be, right? So you have seen, you know, even for AKO, AMKO, it all communicates to the controller itself. So that's the single place where you manage all the policy configuration lifecycle of the service engine. Yeah. Yeah. It's very feature rich. Yeah. Great. This is an integrated solution, which means that it's going to make your operations much more simplified, right? So you do not need to deal with, again, multiple different discrete solutions over there. Mm -hmm. I talk about the security. And last but not least is on the observability part, right? So as you can see, this is a single place where we actually configure everything. And this is also a good place where you start monitoring all the different components that you've created, right? Whether it's a GSLV, WAF, and all this. So with, with all these metrics that you get out from all these different components, then you are able to give you, you know, great visibility, great insights to your applications. So if there's any outages where you actually requires to troubleshoot, it's mm -hmm. going to make the troubleshooting much more easier. Exactly. And the analytical engine that it has is also really great for finding the issues, performance bottlenecks, et cetera, right? 
Great. Yeah. So now we have covered uh, about RV. Now we're going to talk about how is it integrated with VSphere with Tanzu. Yeah. So this is something new uh, pretty recently. I think it's maybe end of last year in the 2023, we actually yeah. announced 8.0 U2. So previously, prior to 8.0 U2, when you use VSphere with Tanzu with NSX, mm -hmm. you will actually use the native LB by default. Of course, you can you can still integrate with the RV solution, but there's many other things that you need, you need to do, right? So mm -hmm. in 8.0 U2, the BU has made it much easier for this integration. And it comes with this NSX ALB. It has this NSX ALB onboarding procedure that you will actually need to do, right? So mm -hmm. it's a bunch of API that you call. Uh, you can run it on NSX T Manager, or you can be running on a Linux jump host, for example. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you will be integrated with the NSX manager. Yep. When you create any layer for load balancer, it will be created in NSX ARV or RV. So there's a few prerequisites that you actually need to do, right? You need to be on, of course, a minimum of 8.0 you do. Uh, yep. The NSX version is over here. And this is very important over here. You actually need the enterprise license for the RV controller. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is very important. There's a few other things that you need to take note of, right? So in the NSX cloud, you need to make, make sure that you enable the DHCP in the cloud. Mm. And when you create the IPAM profile, you uncheck the uh, allocate IP in the VRF. And the last thing is also very important. You actually need to update the certificate in the RV controller itself. Mm -hmm. So there's a few things you need to do. So once you do that, then the integration is done. So whatever that you create in uh, the supervisor clusters, you will get created in RV. Right. 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 Okay. So let's go on to the demo. Yeah. The most interesting part. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. I have prepared five demos to show in this episode. And I'm going to group some of these demos because some of this is going to be very quick, right? Yes. So, so as you can see on the left diagram over here, so we have the supervisor namespace and here we have the, we created another namespace. In my demo, I call it a namespace tree, right? And mm -hmm. in the namespace tree, we have the TKC clusters and it has a control plane. As you can see, there's multiple places where we actually need load balancer. So the control plane for the supervisor clusters. So I'm going to show you can actually use RV for it. Uh, TKC, you can also use the RV solution for it, all right? Yes. And we mentioned earlier that we'll be only concentrating on AVI load balancer here, right? And all your five demos that you have grouped here, they will all be on AVI, isn't it? Correct. Yes. Yeah. You have NSX running at the back end. So all these are on NSX itself, right? So that's why you actually need to do the AVI controller onboarding on NSX. Okay. okay. Again, I'm just going to show you. Um, so you have the supervisor control plane over here. So these are the three nodes, right? As you can see, the way to lock on the, this supervisor control plane is I'm, I'm going to use CRI for it. Again, I'm going to show you the, skip it. okay, I'm going to show you, right? So this is the cluster that I have over here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the control plane node address, right? This is the VIP for it, okay? Right, right. VIP is uh, virtual IP for load balances. Thanks for that. So, uh, it means virtual IP, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to use the um, virtual IP to lock into the supervisor cluster, okay? So mm -hmm. let me see. Yep, so I'm going to log into the supervisor cluster and yeah, maybe I should just show you how it looks like. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I showed this before in the previous video. So, you basically have to specify your the vid over here, right, for your supervisor clusters. So, let me mm -hmm. log in this. Right. So, once that, that I need to switch on to the context. Okay. Yeah. So, I get the notes so that you can actually see, right, you have multiple control plane, right? Yeah. And let me show you the IP address. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are the three IP address over here. Yeah. Okay. So I can go into the RV controller now, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to the dashboard. This is actually the control plane. You can click on this and you can actually see, right? This is the IP address, the same address that I lock on to, right? Yes. So, yep. That's the, yep. Yeah. And this with this, you can actually expand. And these are all the nodes that I show you, right? You can you can verify right. the nodes IP address. So yeah. this this bit itself is actually load balancing across all this multiple nodes itself. Yeah. Right? So this is the supervisor cluster, the supervisor control plane. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. So that that's the first demo that I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. So once once you have a supervisor cluster running, right, you can create a TKC clusters. So you have a so like what I say, you have to create a namespace here, mm -hmm. and I want uh, TKC clusters over here. I created three. Uh, control plane and three worker nodes you can see over here yeah yeah so again there's multiple nodes over here so you actually needs um what do you call that a, again a load balancer to load balance across all this 
multiple nodes itself. So right. again, I'm going to lock on to the guest cluster. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to have a shortcut over here, right? So now I'm changing my context to the namespace tree, okay? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to get nodes again. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's three um, control plane nodes. Okay. Yeah. So again, um, yeah, so this these are the IP address for the control plane. Yes. We have, let me go back to the RV side. Yeah, so this is the control plane service. So you expand over here. Right. 828789, right? So this one. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, so this this is the VIP for this uh mm -hmm. three control plane nodes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, so as you can see, you know, RV is being utilized as a layer for loop balancer across the supervisor clusters as well as the TKC control plane. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's move back. Can you also show the YAML that actually you use to have that association? Yeah, you don't really need to specify it, right? So um, basically the VIP segment was, you know, part of the, the uh, supervisor creation, which is probably covered in the previous episode. Yeah, right. You actually create an uh, ingress subnet for it, right? So okay. all this all this VIP that you see over here, right? Mm -hmm. Let's make it smaller. This actually all comes from the ingress subnet that you have specified. Yeah. So let me lock on the, you see whether I can show you that subnet over here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, here. Mm -hmm. So you, this is the subnet. So once you configure this in the supervisor cluster, so the, the layer four address will actually comes from here. Right, right, right. And it's being used in the RV itself. You can see right. over here, right? Once we mentioned that ingress there, it automatically plumbs that to the supervisor clusters, right? Great, right, great, right. yeah. Yeah, Got so there's, there's no mention of it in the YAML file itself. Yeah, okay. I can show you the, the YAML file for the TKC. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, so this is this this is the one that create the TKC, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. So we we're gonna deep dive more on this TKC cluster the next on the next episode. But yes. by what I mentioned, you don't really need to specify. Um. You know what you call it the VIP over here, right? Yeah. So those, are, those are all being managed as a kind of like an IP address management being managed by you know NSX as well as RV. Right? Those are all taken care for you. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so th those are all automatically assigned. So it's a pool address, right? It's mm -hmm. a subnet, right? That's what we've seen in here. It's yes. a subnet. And basically, you know, NSX as well as RV will just pick one address from here. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Okay, so let's now move on. So now we are moving on to the workloads itself. You're right. So we're going to go into the clusters. So again, like I mentioned, in the cluster itself, there's multiple ways that you can actually create ingress to the cluster. So it could be in the form of layer for load balancer. It can mm -hmm. also be ingress, right? I'm going to show both, okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm just going to show I'm in, the, in the clusters. Okay, so, yep, so I'm in the TKC cluster. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you the ports that I have. I have some demo ports here. So I have the Hello Kubernetes. I have this Nginx one that I've created. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you the services. Uh, these are the services, the all cluster IP. I don't have anything that's external that's coming in. So the, for the next demo, I'm going to create a external service. For, yes. uh, it's a service type load balancer for Nginx one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I prepared a, the command over here. So you basically yeah. you can just use the expose and mm. it specify type load balancer and this will get exposed right as mm. a layer for load balancer. Okay. Yeah, it's the same Kubernetes command, right? Yeah, good stuff. Correct. Mm. Right. So once I do that, you can see that in services. Okay, it's still pending because it's trying to get a the virtual IP from RV itself. Right. Oh, now you got it. Okay. Yes. Over here. Mm. So we can go into RV and we can see. N.6. Yeah. Oh, here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, okay. yeah. 8.6 and just the one. And you can click on here, you know. So this is the dashboard. This is the analytics that we talked about. Yeah. Of, we just, we just, I just created this. There's no, there's nothing much to see. Of, of course, you can see the logs. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to, Enable more things like you know real time analytics, mm -hmm. and then I show the non significant logs, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, How do we try to browse something there? Yeah, correct. Right. So this is just entering. Okay, let me do a few more requests. Yeah. And you see that. There you go. Right. There you can go. see. Yeah. The exact traffic is coming in. Yeah. And then you can see that you know where is it coming from. So this is the internal client. There's not much information that you can see. But mm -hmm. you know, if you, you use it on the internet, then of course you get to see you know where the client, the location is coming from, and things like that. 
Yeah, right. So that virtual service IP 10.250.8.6 was already created there, or did it get created when we invoked that Nginx expose command? Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, when we did the expose command, it was yes. already created, right? So over here, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just creating a, what do you call it? I'm just generating some traffic. Yes. Uh, and that's already there, and we just, yeah, you will just send it to the to the virtual IP. Okay. You will send it to the ports as well at the back end, right? Over yeah. Here. If you can go back to your uh, Kubernetes command line, let's say if I create another Nginx, let's say Nginx2, right? And I also did the another expose, does it go to the same virtual IP or will it create another virtual IP? You will, you will create another one mm -hmm. because if you create a different service, then of course you will have a different uh, virtual IP, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Avi will give us a separate IP address automatically for that, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. So this, this is slightly different if you use Ingress, uh, mm -hmm. which I'm going to show you later on. But if you mm -hmm. use Ingress, is the shed pool. That's where you, you know, the next demo that I'm going to show, I might as well show you over here. Yeah, right. So, yeah, so this is this is the shed pool. So when you create an ingress controller, they will create a different uh, service, right? Okay. And the ingress will get sharded across multiple service engine. And this is actually shed. So the VIP for ingress is actually being shed. Right? So oh. this is slightly different from load balancer, right? Got, got it. So now, you know, previously you have seen the ports, which is the Hello Kubernetes, correct? Yeah. I already have created the ingress, uh, mm -hmm. right? So you can see I have created the ingress over here. Right. And yeah, so in this case, you can actually use the FQDN over here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let me show you. Um, yeah, let me correct. And is that DNS service also coming from Avi? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can, but uh, you can, but I'm just doing a static one on my on my on my machine. Okay. But yeah, you can you can use the DNS service on Avi itself to provide this, right? Yeah, got it. Yeah, so you can see that I'm actually using the FQDN to access the, the applications. Maybe I will show you. Let me see. Is it? Yeah. So that's the ingress, right? And yeah. let me show you. Yeah, if you're interested, like um, I can show you the YAML file, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the YAML file that I created. You know, there's the cluster IP and then yep. we have the deployment, right? Which is, this is actually deploying the, the pods itself. Yep. And to create an ingress, you actually have to specify, I'm actually creating a HTTPS with TLS. So uh, you, you specify this TLS specs and then mm -hmm. you specify the FQDN yep. and you know, point it back to the Hello Kubernetes service, right? All right, right. So this is how it'll be created. Mm -hmm. whether, whether is it the load balancer creation as well as the ingress controller, right? Yeah. Uh, we have talked about it. It's the is the AKO that is actually doing all this translation, if you want to call it. I can show it to you uh, what's running inside the, the cluster. Yeah. So you can see over here, right? There's AKO running uh -huh. cluster, mm -hmm. right? So this is the one that's actually watching the control plane. And then, you know, previously when we do the expose, when you may create an ingress, the AKO will watch it. And then you will go and create the uh, configuration on the RV controller itself. Okay? Right. So basically, so, it's just an agent running there and sending the API request to the IV controllers, right? And then it does whatever it needs to do in IV controller itself. Yeah. The, the installation of the, of the AKO is really simple. So when you create, after you have created the TKC, this, yes. this has to be done uh, as, a, as an additional step, but mm. it's really you install the, the AKO, right? So I'll, I'll just show it to you over here. Yeah. Okay, I have made some simple scripts to install, right? Mm -hmm. AKO. So basically, you can use Helm to install the AKO. Right. So, and you just specify the version of it. So, this is the configuration. So, it's, again, it's another YAML file. Yeah. Just the one. Okay. And yeah, just show it, show it to you. So, a few things that you need to specify over here. So, yeah, this is, this is, you have to make this a uh, layer seven only, right? Because right. Um, layer four is being handled by the NSX part. You just use it as a layer seven, right? So, this is what we go over here. Mm -hmm. You need to specify it, right? Then mm -hmm. it's going to be used. Right. And the rest is how you want the, the sharding to be done, right? You just basically configure over here. Mm. And the next part is, you know, where's your controller? What is your username and password? And that's about it. Right. right. Once you create this value file, you do a Helm install and AKO will get installed, uh, you know, inside inside here. So this one, the AKO installation, When what is the sequence? When do you install this? So when, after you have created the TKC clusters, yep. the next thing you do is just install the AKO. Right. That's even before bringing up the supervisor clusters, etc. Right. After you have created a supervisor cluster, 
Oh, okay. So, Apple, Apple, and some black right. cluster. So for the RB controller, yes, you need to set up before the supervisor controller uh, cluster. The yeah. supervisor clusters. For then you create it. Once that's done, then you create TKC, right? So yes. RB used as a load balancer for the TKC control plane. Mm -hmm. So once that's up, then if you want to have ingress services for your cluster, yeah. then you go and install AKO. Oh, okay. 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 Got it now. You can see that RB is being used for multiple places, right? Supervisor control plane, TKC, the workloads inside TKC using layer follow balancer, and now with ingress. So it can be utilized in multiple places, okay? This is like an all-round load balancer and ingress control, right? This is awesome. Yeah, maybe an additional thing before I move on to the last demo is, so since I have this ingress over here, right? It's actually running on this shared ingress controller over here. Yeah. And it's actually running active, active, as you can see over here, right? right. Um, this is where I'm going to show the differentiator between RV and NSX itself. And right. you can do active, active, right? So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, you know, this tool is not sufficient for me and I need to do a scale up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and you can see over here there it's, you know, scale out, scale in and migrate over here, right? Yeah. So really, yeah, I can just click on scale out. Yeah. If, if there's a service engine av available, they will yeah. use it mm -hmm. and edit the pool. But if there is none, then you will go and create that service engine itself. Yeah. Is it possible to see That's how it's being created in this way also? Yeah, sure. It's, so you can it's see like that, that solution getting getting created, right? Great. So you can yeah. see that there's a deployment after I scale out and it's actually fetching the this is the image, right? 22.15. Yeah. I'm using 21.15. This is the service engine image. Yeah. And it's now getting transferred to the host. Yes. And uh, maybe I can show you that it's being created. The version of the VM. Yeah, this yeah. one, right? Great. Yeah, and this is actually being created in uh, in vSphere right now, right? So you okay. can scroll out easily in RV itself. Yeah. One question. So if, let's say, you know, you have resource contents in there within your Kubernetes cluster, uh, will RV automatically detect that and then scale it out for us? Or does it have to be manual like this? You know, probably have to do with your monitoring and things like that. Yep. And, uh, and you can actually scale out the clusters. So again, mm -hmm. scaling out the clusters for TKC is really simple. Yeah. Uh, you, you just need to go into your your YAML file, and then you can actually edit it. And you change, you just need to change your replica over there. Start it. So mm -hmm. why not just show it to you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we can do that. Like uh, the the next in the next episode, I I will scale out the TKC, right? I think it's more appropriate when we talk about TKC over there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. I will just show you over here. So basically, you know, you can just go and change this to replica four. Yeah, even five. Then your worker node will increase. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So. Again, like what I say, you you can do your scaling both on the worker nodes itself and then outside your Kubernetes clusters, you can scale it in the RV, right? In the form of virtual machines, which we, which we have just done over here. Yeah, right? yeah so that's really cool. Mm. I think this is a big differentiator over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so last thing, especially when we talk about Kubernetes in and on VCF, we are not just talking about TKC clusters. Right. right? There's right. multiple things that uh, you can actually use. You can use vSphere ports. You can use VM service. As you mm. can see, these two VMs that are created over here, right? one Photon and one Ubuntu. Yes. These are created by VM service. Okay. So yep. that's the last demo that I'm going to show. Okay. Let me log on to the soup cluster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now I'm in the supervisor control plane, as you can see over here. Okay. And I'm going to show you, you know, VMs that's been created. Right, yeah. so you can see that these are the TKC clusters, and yeah. these are the two VMs that are created. Right, so you can you can see in uh, vCenter, you can also see it on the CRI itself. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So you know you can specify the images in the mm -hmm. content library. Yeah. You can create your you can actually create your own image and upload to content library, and you can actually use the Kubernetes API to create the service itself. Okay. okay. I mean, can you actually it, demonstrate that uh, to create, let's say, one virtual machine through this service, and then also load balancing? Yeah, sure. That will take some time. So, okay, let me let me try a, a photon one, okay? Yeah, the simple, like very small footprint one. Yeah. Okay, let me let me create another one. Yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. basically, I'm going to call it VM2. Same name, same. Same name space. Same name, same everything, yeah. Yeah, I'll just keep it the same, just a different name, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. What is that KAF? 
So basically, it's just shortcut for me for Coop CTL apply dash F, right? Oh, All right. right. Okay. Got yeah, it. I put it. I put it in my the shortcut, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, um, yeah, you, this is the VM service I've mm -hmm. created the VM over here. Yep. So again, you will fetch the image from uh, the content library, and you actually create it over here. Really cool way to interact with virtual machines, right? From within the TKZ clusters. Awesome, man. Great. The use case for this is like, you know, you could have microservices running in your TKC clusters, yeah. and then you probably need a database, right? Yeah. Or you just need VMs as a yeah. service rather than content. You can actually use this VM service. Yeah. And maybe something that you want to have it persistently. That makes sense. Yeah. Because all, I'm using a network topology over here, and mm. the way you want to get access to the service, right? Yeah. To the VMs, you, you actually have to create a load balancer service, right? So, like, for example, if I want to do SSH over here, actually needs to create um, the service for it, right? Yep. And associate it with the VMs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, again, you know, you will actually use the RV controller for it, right? So, you can okay. see all this, all this address over here. Yeah. Okay, in, in the virtual service itself, right? Over here. So, this is the one, the photo, the first one that I created is actually showing over here. Essentially, you can use the RV for VM service as well. That's essentially what I want to show, right? So not yep. just TKC, you can also use it for VM service, even vSphere ports, right? You can also use it for it as well. So now maybe let's take a look at, you know, I, I remember I scale up the service engine, right? You see, is it this one? Yeah. So I, as you can see, I have, you know, previously there was only two and I successfully scale up third one, right? And remember there was the DXX KG, right? So, yeah. you know, what I say, you can easily scale up your uh, service engine for all your different applications that's running in your your platform, right? Exactly. This so, is yeah, good. We I, covered I, all of these five demos in a very short time, right? <laughs> I hope I did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is really excellent, man. I really liked what you showed us. Yeah, so this is, uh, like I said, really all-rounder load balancer here with Abby, which can do uh, the control plane balancing, the workloads load balancing, and also the ingress control. And also for VM services, right? Super cool demos, man. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, and I'm just barely stretching the surface over here, Sakya. Like, you know, there's much more things that you can do with RV. You know, the multi-cluster setup uh, that you can do and, you know, enabling WAF services. I'm, I'm sure that you try to Google a bit, you know, you should be able to find demos on all those videos. So do check them out as well. But there's much more capabilities that is out there. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I mean, like you said, we just crashed the surface here. We just looked at the tip of the iceberg. I mean, load balancing itself is such a great enterprise, great load balancer with WAF, analytics, all the orchestration, everything, right? And automation in build. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah. for our viewers, yeah, please uh, look into more about Abby. There are lots of practical demos and lots of resources out there that you can use Abby for using its full potential. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Mindeth. Really, really good, bro. Really appreciate you know all the things that we have done here. Let's wrap up this episode here, and uh, we'll be diving deep into TKZS cluster and how it is deployed and managed in VCF next time, isn't it? Yeah. So, like, we, we give a little snippet about it just now, but, you know, yeah. let's deep dive into it in the next episode. Like, give it justice, right? Absolutely, man. There is more to come. So, yeah, thanks, Vincent. Really appreciate your time today, man. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me. And Take thank care. you to everyone, all the viewers. Thank you very much for staying. Thanks for watching. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.